Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Ship operators navigating global trade routes not only face the vast expanse of the world's oceans, but also rely on critical engineering. Canals are the lifeline through which global trade flourishes. They allow the direct and speedy movement of goods across the continents, thus ensuring shorter voyages and lower fuel consumption. Panama Canal uses a specialized railway system, known as mules, to assist in the movement of ships. These mules are powerful, locomotive-like vehicles that run on tracks parallel to the locks. They don't actually tow the ships through the locks. Their function is primarily to hold the ship's position during transit through the lock chambers. It is a 51-mile marvel across a new canal that joins the Atlantic and the Pacific. It takes advantage of lock systems that have been innovated to raise ships 85 feet above sea level on Gatton Lake, thus saving time and excavation in maritime trade. For more than a century, the Pedro Miguel lock set the maximum dimensions for ships on the Panama Canal, limiting length, breadth, and draft according to the width of the ship canal and the clearance now offered by the Bridge of the Americas. This system is essential for preventing collisions with the lock walls by adjusting the lateral position of the ships, ensuring safe and precise navigation through the canal. Ships enter and exit the Panama Canal from planned access points on both the Atlantic and Pacific sides. The operation of the locks raises or lowers ships to cross Gatton Lake and other sections of the canal. This is done by a system of gravity-fed water management with the aid of no pumps. Large culverts within the walls of the locks transfer water in and out of the locks to allow the ship to ascend or descend in accordance with the elevation profile of the canal. The operation of the Panama Canal is controlled by control rooms that supervise the opening and closing of gates and valves. These control centers are important for directing the water flow and passage of ships through the canal to ensure safe, efficient navigation through the lock system. Los barcos, eh, cuando entran al canal, eh, demoran aproximadamente entre 8 y 10 horas cruzando el canal centenario. Debido a que el canal, la ampliación del canal Eh, tiene un poquito más de, 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 de detalles al momento de cruzar los, las embarcaciones, demoran un poquito más, estamos hablando de entre 10 y 12 horas para las embarcaciones más grandes. The gates used in the Panama Canal are known as miter gates. The gates form an angle like a miter joint in carpentry, forming a V-shape, which points towards the higher water level.
This design allows those gates to withstand pressure from water when closed. Each gate leaf is very heavy and hollow, so it floats in water, reducing strain on the hinge and operation devices. The gates are opened and closed by electric motors via gear and strut systems connected to huge bull wheels recessed in the lock walls. In principle, the bull wheel is similar to the device on a railroad locomotive. It supports movement through the connecting struts during rotation and under the activation of the motor, pulls or pushes the gate open or closed. The essence is ensuring a smooth swing of the gates and providing a closure mechanism capable of withstanding high pressure generated by the lake and ocean waters. Water is admitted into or released from the lock chambers through a system of giant tunnels called culverts, which run along the sides and center of each lock chamber. This system allows the gradual equalization of water levels so that the gates may be opened only when the water pressure is equal on both sides for the safe and efficient passage of vessels. The Panama Canal expansion project, completed in 2016, introduced a lane with larger locks to allow for modern Neo-Panamax ships. Though not fully operative, this expansion, which uses state-of-the-art water-saving basins that recycle some of the water during lockage operations, greatly enhances the canal's capacity, easing some of the environmental pressure. El canal de Panamá funciona con agua dulce. No utilizamos agua de los océanos Pacífico o del mar Caribe perteneciente al océano Atlántico. Es agua dulce proveniente de la lluvia, ya que el agua salada corroe la estructura. Climate change is significantly impacting the Panama Canal, particularly through its effects on water levels, which are crucial for the operation of the canal's locks. Entonces esta, este cambio climático puede afectar directamente al funcionamiento normal del canal, ya que esto reduce la cantidad de lluvias que caen dentro del sistema del canal. Entonces esta reducción de lluvias eh, puede, puede reducir la cantidad de embarcaciones que pasan a través del canal. El año pasado, el año 2023, se convirtió en el año más seco en la historia del canal de Panamá. Y esto provocó una serie de de mecanismos o de utilización de, de ciertas... Due to rising temperatures and decreased rainfall in Central America, the region is experiencing more frequent and severe droughts. This has led to lower water levels in Gatton Lake and other reservoirs, which supply the water necessary for ship transit through the canal's locks. The situation highlights the broader challenges that critical infrastructures like the Panama Canal face in the era of climate change, where traditional assumptions about water availability and weather patterns no longer hold. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.